Welcome Internet to the Psychologist Casual Review and today I wanted to review a very short but incredible little text of uh, Jacques André which is a French psychoanalyst and psychiatrist. Now, I don't think it has ever been translated. The French title of the, um, of the article, which is in a book that I already took an article from and reviewed it, uh, Villager, but this is the opening article of the book, which is, I would like to understand. And it is the, I would like to understand in the context of psychoanalysis, especially the therapy of psychoanalysis, not the fairy, but really the practice of the therapy. And it starts off with uh, the quote of a patient, uh, Jacques André quotes a patient that says, I don't know what I want. And he does continue on his, um, his essay by explaining that that's the whole point of psychoanalysis, is trying to go beyond the understanding, the formal understanding, seeing in words that seem trivial or mundane a meaning that they don't necessarily show at the very beginning, or seeing something deeper than its surface level meaning. And he gives the example of a patient he calls Amandine. Um, I don't know how you'd say it in English, but Amandine is basically a patient that had issues with her husband. And he explains that the former therapist told her after a long hour of listening that he would help her divorce. And she never ever uh, rescheduled an appointment with that therapist. And Jacques André says that basically it shows us how divided in our core we can be and how psychoanalysis is the method of investigation of that division, of that thinking process. And he does explain in this very short text, but it's so brilliant, how in a way it can never be like all the other sciences, all the other disciplines of mankind, because it cannot be observed from the comfort of a tainted glass window. It's the interaction of two human beings, the not even just like the words that are spoken, but how they are felt, how they are received on both parties. That, as he says, it cannot tolerate a third entity because the third entity would not be right. It would just be something that's outside and inside. Whereas the psychoanalysis is not outside of the process. He is binded by the process. He is he himself in a way, taken into the process. And it gives this incredible metaphor that even icebreakers can get stuck in ice. And that's sometimes that does happen in psychoanalytic psychotherapy. That sins can be blocking both for the patient and for the therapist. And how, in a way, it's through the tr trying and failing of the observation of the unconscious mind that all of, that, all of those sins emerge and evolve and how in a way it goes far beyond the simple reaches of what can be observed. It's a con construction that's always in a way ongoing, that is trying to find an answer that cannot be simple, that cannot be outright and overt. It's something that necessi necessitates so much work both on the clinician and on the patient's side. Something that's very deep and profound, I feel, like a way of expressing it. And I feel that in those four pages, because yes, the article is really not long, he does really get to the core of what this is, how one is not in a state of protection when doing therapy, even the therapist. He hasn't treaded this ground a thousand times, on the contrary of what people think. The therapist himself is experiencing something new with the patient at the moment of the, that the patient talks about it. In a way, it's very similar, not the same vocabulary, but very similar to the ideas of Ogden, that something is going on within the sessions, within the relationship, and within the symptoms themselves, that the meaning is goes beyond anything that you can understand on the surface, that it's something that's 
both exposed those in the past but also in the present and how it's not uncovering the past that heals it's this interplay between uncovering the past giving it meaning and opening a new light and shining a new light onto the past via the present and via the future that it's not this, just this um, cold archaeological search it's a, an aliveness in the search, uh, a joy always and constant uh, to be able to go back and try and revisit uh, memories, uh, past experiences, even trauma, and trying to make it something, transform it in a way. It doesn't use that word, but that's what I got out of it. To transform all of what we experience in and to be able to make something of it and create something that is an understanding. J'aimerais comprendre is literally that. I would want to understand. And that's something that the patient might feel for himself. He doesn't say that I'm going off script, so to speak, but that's how I understood the text. The, um, the idea is that the patient wants to understand, but the, the analyst also wants to understand. And perhaps that's what drives all analysts at their core, is that will to understand both the other and themselves, and how the unconscious mind is, regardless of all attempts, always so insaisissable, as the French would say, meaning that it can't be seized, it can't truly be understood. There's a reason why we call it unconscious and not just subconscious or non-conscious. Unconscious really means that in a way we will never fully be aware of it. It stays like a, a mystery, um, like an ever so lasting um, horizon that always keeps expanding. A bit like the universe in a way, I mean in a very metaphorical way. But that's how it works. It's like the ramifications are so deep and so profound. And Jacques André leaves us on a very interesting note. He says that basically psychoanalysis always has is always one question too early and one answer too late. That in a way there's no way of answering everything. And that that shouldn't be the goal of psychoanalysis. It should be to try and um, take enjoyment, play in, as he would say in the um, in this short essay, like a child that's always asking why, 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 why. The goal is not the answer. The goal is the relationship and, um, and the excitement of such a relationship. Excitement in a good way, right? Not in that Ogden way, but really is a joy in the asking of the question. And he ends on a very, very interesting note, which I'm going to take a bit of time to develop because he doesn't. He goes in in four lines and that's pretty much it. Um, he ends on the fact of saying that hatred, um, contrary to love or care or meaning, does not have, does not seek, I would say, yes, it's better said like that, does not seek understanding, it knows. Knowing is hatred. And that's something that I found very interesting. Of course, it's not to say that all knowledge is hate, but the idea that hateful people know something is very true. When hate is involved, there is no guessing. You don't guess. You know what the other one wants. And you know how hateable he is, how despicable he is. And that's something he doesn't necessarily develop, but is an incredible ending point. And I want to develop it here in this video because I think it's worth developing. How in the end, hatred will always have the answers for everything. Because hatred is self-absorbed. It doesn't need anything to valid its point of view. It is valid throughout, throughout its own existence. It doesn't need exterior validation. And I think that that's a, a very important point, for example, in processes like racism, xenophobia, homophobia, and so on and so forth, is that reality, external reality, is irrelevant in hate because hate has already seeked its roots. It doesn't need something to come and confront it. On the contrary, it wants to destroy what confronts it. And in that sense, there is no compromise with hate. Hate knows. And at the point where it knows, it's going to destroy. 
because it doesn't need to recant or to question what it is. And I found that to be very, very accurate, especially when hatred uh, is massive with people, that they need nothing, they just are in a way bulldozers that can destroy and will destroy what they feel is necessary. And that's something that he very briefly remarks on that I found very important and a very good thing to always be reminded of, that there is love, there is care, there is all of that. But there's also a darker side, and that darker side needs to um, at least be taken into account. Because even though we can't fully analyze someone, because that's a fantasy, that even the best psychoanalysis, even people that have done so many years, so many insights, they're not fully analyzed. As I said, the unconscious is like the universe, it keeps on expanding. So we don't know everything. And the claim of knowing is a claim that's unreachable and unethical even. We don't know. But that's all the more reason to look for it and to try and understand. And if we ever are too certain of an answer, perhaps it's time to think about it and to question it. So I hope you liked the video and um, I'll see you in the next one.